afternoon and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. As always, I'm your co-host Callum, and thankfully, with me as always, is your other co-host Scott. Hey, how we doing? Yeah, good man. Yeah? You right? Yeah, good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm full of caffeine, full of sugar, I'm ready to go, mate. <laughs> I'm not surprised <laughs> after the night you've had. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, house for the teenagers. Yeah, lucky you. Mm. Although I'm sure it was self-inflicted from what you said, so it's... Seems no to be. sympathy, really. Seems to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Certainly long for the ride. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, so before we uh, get into the uh, episode, um, as always, we've got some shout outs to get through. Cool. Um, firstly, our beloved patrons, yes. <laughs> James and Justin. Hey, guys. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you as always uh, for the continued support. Um, you know, it's much appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, and remember, listeners, you too can be a part of the Supporters Club. <laughs> and uh, and you can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash Cryptid Ramblers podcast. Yeah, indeed. It's easy as that. Yeah, guys, come support your favourite podcast. Absolutely. We've um, we've got uh, two reasonably priced tiers to choose from, if I do say so myself. They are reasonably priced, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> um, priced at £4 and £6. Plus VAT. Plus VAT, yeah. Plus VAT. Plus the AT, we've got to get that one in there <laughs> before we get lynched again, yeah, before, yeah. before we get tumbled off. Um, you'll get um, early access to each bi-weekly episode, uh, a personal shout out, as you've just heard. Um, and if you're part of the top tier, um, then you'll also see the video recording of each podcast as well um, as, uh, as an exclusive. Get to see these beautiful mugs. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, or I know a lot of you, watched the Halloween special, yeah. as a and hopefully that's acted as a little taster for what you can, for what you can expect. <laughs> the professional content. The professional yeah. content, yeah. <laughs> Ish. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. Professionals used uh, yeah, we'll take loosely. That. Yeah, yeah. We'll take that. Um, so yes, there's plenty of reasons to uh, come and support your favourite podcast, yeah, as well. uh, Scott said. Um, now we can't do any shout outs and uh, thank yous without men- mentioning the home of Cryptid Ramblers podcast. Mm-hmm. The place where the uh, the magic happens, our new purpose built studio here at uh, Hellfire Studios, mm-hmm. it is based in Southend, which is roughly forty five minutes from London, and it is the first podcast, film, and photography studio here in Essex. Hellfire Studio offers full content creation, so visit hellfirecreative dot com for more info on that. Now, as always, for being a uh, a keen listener, you can benefit too from our sponsorship by receiving a twenty percent discount. Simply go to hellfirestudio.uk and use the code CRYPTID at the checkout. And it is as easy as that. Simple. It's, yeah, it couldn't be any easier, really. Yeah. <laughs> and you save money. So, that, that as you well. Know, win-win. Um, and you come and get to use the equipment and yeah. services that the guys uh, the guys offer here. Yeah, get in there quick as well. Absolutely, yeah. Because um, yeah, things are really picking up quick. I yeah. think we're going to be on our way out soon, I think, if it carries on. <laughs> <Tell> <laughs> so, <about> it. <laughs> So no, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's really good uh, for the guys. So yeah, if it's something that uh, yeah catches your fancy, then um, yeah, mm. go to the website and uh, and check them out. Yeah. Um, now, by way of an update, uh, as opposed to a shout out, we are getting ever closer to launching our new merch store. Mm-hmm. Um, as we've said before, um, they are a, a local company uh, to us, much like uh, Hellfire, and uh, yeah, the quality is. Excellent. Oh, we haven't seen um, we haven't seen our own um, stuff as yet, but um, we were here when they were well, yeah, a couple they, of months ago. Well, they were yeah, doing they, a shoot they, for exactly. They were doing a promo shoot for a new right line. Here, Yeah, and we managed to get a little sneak peek of their uh, of their merch. It's one of their new it's lines that was um, that was dropping, and yeah, got to mm. take a look. And yeah, it's it's really good stuff. And you know, and what's better is that they're you know the local to us, and um, yeah, supporting mm. a, another local company. Yeah, which and also is, for, uh, great for, for like us. A, you know for the eco-friendly sort of thing all of their yeah. materials are you know um, responsibly <coughs> sourced as well yes yeah so, absolutely mm. yeah so that's good so um yeah we're working on some uh, new designs whilst freshening up some of the old ones so um yeah keep your eyes peeled for for that um and as i'm sure for the, the coming weeks there'll be more updates to uh, to follow um now all that's out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that gone for all that comes out of the way. Yeah. Just skip through it all. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. yeah. Um, let's get on with the uh, the episode, shall yeah, we? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, any regulars would remember that um, we again remembered last time to uh, mention it <laughs> we at did. the end. Yep. Um, although I had a moment where I actually forgot. 
But <laughs> that's, that was quite funny. But yeah, that's because we we mugged around with the actual recording, didn't we? We recorded yes. yeah. that the that episode. Yeah. We recorded the Wendigo before we did before that one. And so I've got myself a bit muddled. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but for anyone who, who did listen, you will know that we are covering uh, giants. Yeah, we are. In in all their enormous glory. Um, <laughs> well, that's, so what said. that's what she said. That's what she said. There you go, that's the first that's one. That's the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Tick. Ding. <laughs> yeah. We'll try and get a little counter somewhere. Yeah, maybe. we'll get a little counter. <laughs> a little sound effect. Yeah, one of those, uh, those clerk bells. <laughs> yeah, Ding. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll, we'll jump into it. Go for it. Excellent. Um, so I'm sure everyone knows or at least has an idea because they have been in pop culture for quite some time yeah, now. Yeah, pop they? culture and just reg- just culture and in just, general. Yeah. Really, yeah, you know, we've fairy got fairy tales uh, and yeah, fairy tales movies. And, uh, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk and all those yeah. sort of things. And that's one of the big ones. Yeah, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and uh, yeah. the, all the, the 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 fantasy novels yeah. and storylines and everything. And mm. yeah, so they've been a strong yeah. part of what we are yeah no they have um in folklore specifically um giants are beings of human-like appearance but are mostly depicted uh, as being great in size and strength um now as we've um covered uh, in other episodes um each region across the world has its own idea you know of what a giant is and its characteristics and you know what it looks like um but interestingly I know more for my um, research, um, it actually took me down the religion uh, rabbit yeah, hole saying. with um, the mentions in, you know, the good book and other uh, <laughs> other religious uh, texts. Text. Yeah. So, exactly, yeah. Um, which was quite a surprise because say everyone has their own idea of what they think a giant is or where it has come from. And, mm. you know, you think that it was just imagined by, you know, Tolkien or you know his predecessors yeah, or just, whatever and it was just imagined as a you know as a as a monster but um but no i mean as, as we'll find out there is actually you know real world real world um, evidence, evidence yeah. to suggest that they exist and also religious uh, origins which um mm. which will come up uh, will, will come over as well um so yeah the word giant itself um is believed to have been first used in 1297 by a chap named robert of gloucester that's interesting. I would have thought it would have been early on would, that, really. Have, yeah, and not from England. I would have England, been England. Greek. Yeah, exactly. Um, he wrote a chronicle around the late 13th century, um, which was about English, British and Norman history. Uh, it was in two parts, um, and each one contained seven parts, and it was one of those seven parts where he sort of coined, I guess what we know is the English word, Ah, giant. I see. Okay. So obviously the Greeks had their word, and you know, which wasn't that different actually. Um, you know, the Romans had their own word, and mm. and so on and so on. But um, from what I could, uh, from what I could find, the English um, version, the of English, that. Oh, okay. the English word sense. giant, it came from 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 that chap who yeah he just sort of thought it up and and coined it in, and it wasn't from what I could see that the whichever part it was contained in wasn't. Um, specifically about that it was like a an off-the-cuff uh like phrase or, or word oh, okay. that was used within the article um, mm. which was quite interesting so i'm not sure if he necessarily so it, meant could, for it, it could have been part of the vernacular it was about something else and that word was kind of yeah thrown okay, in and, sense, yeah. Then, yeah um which i think in itself is quite interesting because they would have been in existence long before well, well i suppose written, if it was but, just like casually used like that in literature then mm. i suppose it would just would have been a word that was being used that was being spoken yes yeah. for a while and mm. it just you know it just made sense for them to write it down yeah yeah absolutely yeah okay and okay. i think that was kind of it yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. certainly from what i could tell anyway from gotcha. from reading the, the, the actual articles um now interestingly the that that word um Giant is believed to also derive from the word gigantus, um, which is used in both Greek and Roman m- m- mythology. Mm. Um, in Greek mythology, they were a race of um, of, of great strength and, and aggression, um, but not necessarily great in um, stature. Uh, they, were known, they were known for their battle with the Olympian gods. So. Yeah, they weren't necessarily known for being so that would 12, have been 15 feet. The Titans, then, wouldn't they? they? Were, yeah, yeah. Pretty the much. The Titans and the 
offspring of. Yeah, right, basically. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the as it goes into um, here, the giants were uh, the offspring um, of Gaia, the goddess of Earth, mm -hmm. um, born, <laughs> born from the blood of her son. Uranus, <laughs> the, oh, right. said from, from the mutilation of Uranus. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, right. he was uh, he was castrated by his son Cronus, oh. who was a titan. Um, Definitely mutilated, and that's where the, uh, the the giants in Greek mythology, at least, are believed to have uh, come from the uh, okay, scrotum from blood of a titan. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the scrotum blood of a titan. Yeah, okay, more or less. Gotcha. Yeah, he's put in a in a far more. Um, Romantic and poetic way, but oh, I don't, no doubt. But yeah, for the yeah, most part, I think Uranus <laughs> may have meant something completely different. <laughs> I think, I think you might be right. <laughs> Leave it <the> heck. <laughs> and so it begins. And so it begins. <laughs> um, now there is a, not just in the various mythologies, but even in pop culture, there is a contrast in, you know, the term you know, sort of giant and how it is depicted. Um, in Henry Cole's Jack and the Beanstalk, they are depicted as big and dumb, um, mm. whilst, you know, being violent and wanting to eat humans. Um, but in Rogue Doll's BFG um, and some others, giants are depicted as more uh, sort of gentle and, and clever uh, beings and certainly more friendly towards humans. Mm. Now, I actually found something that would actually explain both. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that. You can come on to that later. I'll or... touch on that oh, later. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, I did, yeah, I did come across something that might actually explain those two points. Why there's the two differences. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so, intriguing. But yeah, I've already, I've already yeah. teased you before we started. <laughs> you did. I, I found <laughs> a load of stuff that I think you'd be very interested yeah. in, and it was stuff that I found really late on, um, yeah. like only a couple of days ago, and I, I'm That's right. furiously noting for, like the, for the past couple of hours today. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like a blessing in disguise that we're recording a little bit later yeah. than we usually yeah. would on a Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and also thanks to that, listeners, this episode is now longer than uh, originally planned. Yes, it is. <laughs> so uh, buckle in. <laughs> yeah. Bit comfy. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll touch yeah. back on that later on. Perfect. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, now, we sort of jump, that, that's a little bit on the sort of the you know, etymology and, and the, you know, the kind of the origin, um, for the most part, of, uh, of you know, giants. Um, but as I said, my research, which thankfully was different to yours, mm -hmm. did um, take me down the more religious um, path, which it, it did initially when, when I was searching sort of various things, but I, I sort of could see quite quickly that it was one hell of a black mm. hole with it was just going to keep going and going and going and going and so I, I sort of tried to make the conscious effort to sort of pull away from that mm. and sort of use it as a you know as sort of you know source material but not go too much into it but I just found that deliberately or in what's the opposite of deliberate but anyway <laughs> accidental <laughs> accidental that'll do that wasn't what I was thinking of but that'll do <laughs> But um, I ended up just coming back to it. It didn't seem to matter which way I tried to go or how clever I was with, you know, oh, my searches okay. and stuff. That's interesting. And it would be either the particular religion or a figure within that religion or yeah. just something that would sort of draw me back onto that path. So then I just sort of gave into it. I just thought, okay, well, this is obviously where... That's where you've got to go with this it. This is where I've got to go with it. This is, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to go. Um, so on that note, um, in, the, in the Hebrew Bible... Um, the Nephilim, which I know we've mentioned before we have, in, a, yeah. in, a, in an episode, um, are a race of people um, that are basically are large and strong, so as you'd expect. Um, the word itself is loosely translated as giant, um, but uh, some traditional Jewish explanations um, interpret the word as the fallen ones or fallen angels. Yeah. Um, yeah, because this this pretty much stems from the Book of Enoch, doesn't it? Yes. Well, yeah. well, this in particular is Genesis, but that in turn mm. is kind of off the back of that as well. Which again, I'll, I mean, I'll briefly go into it because that's yeah. a whole yeah. That, we could that do a whole, whole episode on, on the yeah. Book of Enoch. Really. I mean, that would be a that would have to be a two parter at least. Yeah. Well, I've, I've <laughs> so, again, I'm going to touch on this because yeah. this is where our in, we've we've always, set, it crosses over. We've but, researched different yeah. things, but I've found stuff from the British. Mm. Um, law and legends yes. that sort of coincides right, with the okay. Nephilim. So it's, right. I don't know whether or not it's like um, 
transfer of culture and knowledge or, yeah, or, or, or know. if it's just like they've heard the same thing and they you know it's hard to yeah it's, it's hard to sort of know distinguish whether or not it's the same thing that's happened in different locations yeah or it's just a story that's progressed with with cultures and yeah and such but yeah i, I exactly I found that, that yeah. from britain that was very much along the same okay. lines as the nephilim and the watches and that sort of thing yeah that, well, they they come up as you know yeah mm. so yeah according to genesis the nephilim were wiped out by the great flood you know the the, the, great, the, flood. the great flood with noah and mm. his ark which we there's know a whole backstory as to why that was done flood. Yeah. it was We've yeah got, you know, there's actual evidence. evidence of it. Yeah. Um, however, there have been reports of them since that event, so it um, seems like it was a failed attempt Didn't to. Catch uh, well, yeah, exactly. It was a failed attempt to um, to to wipe them out. Um, it is believed that uh, Nephilim are the offspring of gods or ultra terrestrials and human women. Um, they could range from eight to fifteen feet. Um, the story of the uh, Nephilim, as you mentioned, is also in the Book of Enoch, um, and it connects the origin of them to the fallen angels, which I think is where the translation has come from. Mm. Um, and in particular, the Watchers, yeah. as you just rightly mentioned, um, they were a special type of angel. Um, Samiatsa, I'm hoping I've said that right, um, an angel of high rank um, and leader of the Watchers, led a a rebel band of angels in a descent on earth to basically have sexual intercourse with human females. Yep. Um, the dirty buggers. Absolutely, yeah. Um, most of um, most of this started around the time of the patriarch Jared, who was the father of Enoch, mm -hmm. which is why it's featured in his tales and in his book. Um, Samiatsa fathered two sons, half-breed giants um, called and this is where it might get a bit sketchy, <laughs> but um, Oya and Haya. Oya and Haya? Yeah, I, I, I made the same joke when I read them. Hi, hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing, which is why I was reluctant to read them out. <laughs> um, now, Samiatsa and his two sons, whose names I won't repeat, <laughs> um, would basically wreak havoc, um, falling into debauchery and wickedness amongst humans, basically, mm. um, and more so kind of their, their females in their pursuit to mate with them, basically. Gotcha. That was kind of their, that was their end game. Um, now, basically, <laughs> I've, actually broke, I've actually written this down in my notes like this, um, but sick of their shit, <laughs> God instructed the angel Gabriel um, to cause the Watchers and Giants to wage a civil war. Um, once the Archangel had essentially punished the Giants and the Watchers, uh, God, after several, several generations, um, set about causing um, the Great Flood of Noah gotcha. um, to essentially wipe out the remnants of any of this corrupt hybrid race that may have still been left after the war was, was, was over. Gotcha, okay. Um, so, was it technically, as, was it a genocide. Was it as really. epic? So, as the Pygmy Crane War? It was not, no. Okay. It was not. But I think it was anything close. will be quite I as think epic as that. Quiet. No, absolutely not. But, uh, it, it... <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, it, it comes a close second, I'd say, but no, it's not, not quite as epic as that. <laughs> um, that a better soundtrack. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and this, part of this also um, comes from the Book of Giants, um, which was found amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls in the, uh, the Qumran Caves in Israel. Yeah. Um, dubbed the Cave of Horror. Um, I think because well, of what was found in there and the texts and what they were kind of alluding to. And well, who, who dubbed it? The priests or the Vatican? Or, well, uh, a mixture of the two, I'd oh, imagine. I bet, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Uh, yeah, yeah, we wonder why. They, they, they <laughs> forgot about those books. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, don't go there and read all that. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's horrible, yeah. We'll, we'll call it the Cave of Horror. The Cave of Horror. So you don't go down there and realise what everything really means and <laughs> the truth of the world. Because, you know, you don't want to know that. Cave of Horror. <laughs> oh, he was that. Ben, um, Bender, wasn't it? 
Yeah, he had his chamber of horrors. <laughs> the chamber of horrors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Albert K. Bender. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. He did. Um, he must have had a bit in it. Yeah, I know, you, you must have done. You must have done. Um, now, there are, as we've um, as we said, there are variations of um, giants, and some of the uh, more popular ones are found in Armenian, uh, Baltic, Basque, uh, Bulgarian, Greek, and Hindu uh, cultures, mm. uh, in terms of the, uh, what I could find in terms of like, the most popular, um, in, in terms of the belief mm. that they actually exist and where their story um, sort of comes from. So you know, the Basque are a very interesting culture. That they are. They, they're yeah. very, very interesting, like their genetics and everything mm. else. It's, they're, yeah. they're so isolated. They're, like, they're isolated, sorry, to, get, like, to digress, yeah, they're, they're, they're isolated right. in the, the mountains between Spain and France. Yes. They've got their own little area mm. there, and they are an isolated culture yeah. that's remained unchanged for thousands of years. It's, mm. yeah, incredible. It's intriguing that they've been sort of left alone and mm. just to get, you know, get on with things in, in such a... Yeah, they've, know, got, they've got one of the highest concentration of uh, Reese's negative blood as well. Oh, wow, right. Which is... You know, negative, I they're popular. <laughs> negative blood is, <laughs> yeah. you know, very, very rare. Yeah, yeah. Got, I think something ridiculous, like 70 or 80% of their population has oh, orange negative it. blood. Wow. Yeah, I it's that. incredible. That's interesting, yeah. And that, yeah, that this is... Um, orange negative blood popped up in the human genome about 30, 35,000 mm. years ago. Just yeah. out of nowhere. Like, yeah. we, can't really, uh, we can't really trace its genetics further back than 30 or 35,000 years. Wow, okay. But yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, interest that. Uh, yeah, where did that pop up for Yeah, 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 yeah. chuck a little bit of pub knowledge in there for you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 yeah I've been waiting for that question to come You've up. You've been waiting for that, yeah. <laughs> You've been itching to use that yeah. useless knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Basque people are yeah. incredibly. Yeah, they are. Uh, definitely. Incredibly interesting. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll come up again, especially with mentioning in beliefs like this as well. They will, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Um, now, we've previously. Um, we've previously mentioned the uh, Sete car of uh, Native America, and apologies for pronunciation, because um, that is probably wrong. Yeah, yeah I don't remember hearing that one before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't said that before. <laughs> yeah, we haven't said that one before. <laughs> yeah. um, now, they were a legendary uh, red-haired tribe of cannibalistic giants. So, Sete car, was it? It, well, something like that, it, yeah. It, 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 it sounds like a Yorkshireman shouting at his kids. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does, not it? <laughs> right, yeah. Especially if you say it like that, which <laughs> must mean it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the remains of, uh, of this uh, tribe um, were found in the Lovelock Cave in 1911, yeah. which, yeah, um, mentioned in the... One of the last episodes. I can't mm. for the life of me remember which one it was, but it was one of the last two for the uh, winter girl, the one before that. But they definitely came. I think out. it was the trolls. It was the trolls. I think one, it was. Yeah. It was yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, I found a little bit more um, on them as a as a tribe. I'm guessing because it was it's probably more relevant now, and I, I went down the the right yeah. rabbit hole with it. But uh, after giving birth to a disfigured baby, the giants mistreated the child to such an extent that the great spirit or God, as you and I would, would know it, I guess, uh, responded by making the land hot and desolate, um, allowing rival tribes to conquer over them. Um, only two of this uh, Native American tribe actually survived, uh, and they were destined to live on these plains for eternity, sort of alone, wow. all over, all because of the mistreatment of yeah. the child that they... That they had. I guess it must have been like Arizona or something like that then, uh, or Nevada. Is that that, that sort of yes. area? Like the yeah, it is Nevada. Yeah, part of it of yeah, uh, love, the, love, the states. Yeah, love Lock, Nevada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, the actual town or whatever is called Love Lock. Yeah, yeah so it's in the state sense, of Nevada. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought that was uh, yeah that was quite interesting, um, and then jumping into uh, one that I know you all uh, you all quite in. in Joy, Norse mythology. Yes. The uh, the Uten, um, who were opposed um, to the gods, uh, were often referred to as giants. Mm. Um, although they were also described as human sized, some are portrayed as huge, such as the frost giants, mm. the fire giants, and the mountain giants. Um, now, the origin. 
So giants are the origin for most monsters in your, uh, sorry, Norse mythology, um, and also in the Battle of Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. um, the, the 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 kind of story behind that, sort of quickly, is that the giants would storm Asgard and fight the gods until the world was destroyed. The gods themselves um, were related to these giants, Loki being one of them. Yeah. Um, the All Father Odin was the great grandson of the giant. Ymir, mm -hmm. um, and he um, was an ancestor of um, Jotna, who was a troll. Yeah, a, a giant troll. A so, giant troll. Yeah. So um, yeah. So again, it's it's deeply. Well, it makes it makes a lot of sense mythology. as well because Loki um, had children um, from a giant. So he, mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's gonna sound really weird, but Loki gave birth. To, yeah, I've read to that. three yeah. different giant creatures. One of them yeah. being uh, was it on a horse thing? or something? Yeah, it was yeah. Slatenir. Yeah. Slatenir. So it was Odin's eight-legged horse. That's it. That yeah. he gave birth to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. he tried to lure away a Randy. Imagine Spanier. Disney Plus doing that in, oh. uh, in their show. That <laughs> be a very different show. Turn so a few heads, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he also gave birth to Fenrir, wolf, the yeah. the, yeah. the the wolf that eventually destroyed Odin, mm. um, and uh, Jormungandr, which is the serpent in cut in. Circles Midgard, right, um, yeah. and that destroyed Thor. As right, well. okay. And so Loki was the downfall of all. He of was the all. downfall of them all. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, I like how that's kind of deeply. I didn't think it would be that sort of deeply written into the. Uh, oh, mate, you know, there's some mental but, stories coming from the Norse pantheon. But when you yeah realize that the All Father himself was actually a descendant of one, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> it does. <laughs> that they you know this you know they're in this you know kind of so yeah, much. He, to be honest, Odin's quite far down in like the whole sort of Norse mythology family tree. He's yeah. quite low down. He's not. <laughs> no. He calls himself the Old Father, but yeah. he's a bit. Full of himself, really. Yeah. Um, it's a self-given title. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely self-given. Um, and I think that's what I like about them, is that they don't yeah. pretend to be... I guess he does pretend to be the, the almighty, sort of, yeah. to a degree. Mm. But he also knows that he is, he's selfish. And it, like, yeah. the, the stories, they don't they don't gloss over that. They, they yeah. tell it all. And, yeah. Like, they these gods are just as human as you and I. And that's what, I think that's what yeah. I like about it all. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. So that so they were the, the sort of the, you know, in terms of the, you know, kind of, you know, the kind of the, kind of the religion, um, and I guess a little bit of mythology there at the end. Um, what what I sort of found in terms of being the most, um, you know, the most compelling. Um, certainly, we mentioning you know things like the, you know, the Book of Enoch and Genesis and. Mm. You know, and things like that. They, it surprised me actually to find it in in texts of that nature. Because again, if you didn't know any better, you would just assume that they were you know a fairy tale creature or something in in literature or yeah, you know. But as as always, you know, we've been shown, been proven that that's not you know necessarily the case. And there's Definitely. more to these things that you know. I think you and I and and others listening probably would ever have sort of thought of. Mm. Um, which is why I like. Deep diving into sort of these yeah. things because you always are going to unearth a, oh, a surprise I, of, I mean, of some sort. Yeah, I mean this this episode in particular. I've, I mean, I've been talking to you about it. I'm, yeah. I'm I've been quite excited to yeah. to tell yeah. the things that I found and yeah, and even for years. I mean, I've uh, I've been watching that Robert Zephyr yeah. and he's he put out loads of videos where he's de depicted about giants of North America and, and yeah. skeletons being found and everything else like that. It so has, I, yeah. for years I've I've known about this information, mm. but even starting to research it over the past two weeks, there's been so much more that I've yeah, found. And absolutely, yeah. a hell of a lot more closer to home than I've Yeah, from what you been. said, yeah, very much all so. Of, pretty much yeah. all my stuff stays in Britain. Right, okay. So it's, um, yeah, and I've got, a, I've got a top 10 largest skeletons found and you'll be really oh, surprised. Okay. Really, you're right. Really okay. surprised. I look forward to that. Well, look, just to kind of sort of segue into that, um, hmm. I found quite, um, quite an interesting... Um, kind of real world um, sort of skeleton or, or parts thereof. Okay. Um, it, the dubbed the giant of uh, Castleno or Castleno um, refers to the discovery of three bone fragments by Georges Vacher. I should have practiced this, shouldn't you? Really should have I should have done. I did yesterday, but I should have done it Sometimes I write the name and then underneath I'll write how you're supposed to say it. Yeah, that would have been helpful. 
that would have been helpful. Uh, so Georges Fascier de la Pouge. Oh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, there you go. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, it was a good distraction, so I could actually read it and <laughs> practice it. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and this was in 1890. Um, they were found in the sediment used to cover a Bronze Age burial mound. Um, they are believed to belong to one of the largest humans ever found, the or, or certainly at the time, at least anyway. Gotcha. Um, the, uh, the the measurement of the of the bones meant that the the giant would have stood at about eleven foot six. Um, and to this day, no modern peer-reviewed study has been published to basically discount what was, you know, sort of found all the evidence. No one's bothered to sort of go, actually, no, we found that it was from a, you know, an elephant. Which or, is what? Which, which some have. Which some mainstream have science bumped. love to do, especially with things yeah. like Bigfoot and, and stuff like that, where people find, like, uh, yeah. fur samples and stuff like that. They're quick yeah. to get it through the DNA yeah. sequencing and everything else like that. Yeah, exactly. Whereas this... Just, they haven't... No... It's not been sort of cross-referenced or... So they must still have anything. those specimens then? They must have, yeah, somewhere. Um, in 1892, so two years later, um, they were examined at the University of Montpellier uh, by a, profes a professor of zoology, a professor of paleontology, and um, two anatomists. And it was determined that they belonged to a tall race of abnormal growth. I think they were reluctant to kind of buy into the whole giant thing, so they deliberately didn't use that word. Gotcha. But they kind of skirted around it and said everything else but. Um, Sounds about right. And I, th yeah, I think that they, that sort of the translation was that, yeah, it was a, a tall race of abnormal growth. Mm. So, I guess being scientists, they didn't want to... They must you know, have had a thyroid pro problem then yeah, or something like much, that. Yeah, something Good like group. that, some abnormality at birth or yeah, some giant, a... giantitis or... Something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, something genetic. Yeah, something, to, I, I get that. that like, with my yeah. research, it's all like experts are really wishy washy with it. Yeah. Um, so it's called, it's dubbed the giant of Castelnau um, as the bones were found in a cemetery in Castelnau Le Lay in France. Wow. Um, and that was certainly from what I mean, I, I knew you were going down this route, so I didn't want to go too far into it in case mm. we then started. You know, clashing on yeah, no, that's cool. you know sort of evidence, but that was one that I found quite interesting, mostly because, and from from what I could see to this day, it hasn't been disproven or, you know, debunked, mm. and because I did read a few where they'd found these giant bones, and they said you know it was like a you know a thigh bone or something, and it must have been a giant human or whatever, and they're like no, it was a, an elephant yeah, <laughs> or yeah. a giraffe or something like that. So I, I read a load that did get yeah sort of dis disproved, but uh, no, not this one. No, and it was. So long ago, well, this, this, it was quite interesting. I mean, I, I didn't end up writing down all the, the various different uh, ones from North America where they found n either near complete skeletons or whole skeletons yeah. Yeah, have, yeah. of uh, humans that, that were reaching at least eight or nine feet. So, I was to say seven to nine feet was yeah. the, sort of the average, wasn't it? I think in those ones. Mm. And they were, they were like genetically. Uh, uh, anatomically correct in proportion as well. and, absolutely yeah, yeah. in proportion and everything else yeah. And, but yeah my my research ended up taking me down because I got to be excited by it <laughs> I know I could tell <laughs> we got the <your> message <laughs> earlier <laughs> and and I, I've had uh, you know in the interest of time and, and without you know going over the same stuff you know yeah. so and so may found this discovery with this many bones blah 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 blah, blah. yeah um, so there is there is plenty of um uh, newspaper clippings and stuff from like the late eighteen hundreds in particular yeah. from North America that that that, that um, record hundreds of incredibly tall skeletons being mm. dug up um, and in a lot of cases being put back in the ground because the natives right. petitioned for it they were saying right. no no this is You've a sacred the race you need to brand. you yeah. need to put it back. Mm. Um, uh, but my my research, I'll start off with with what I found, and that would that would take us over to uh, Patagonia. In fact. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, this is a bit historical, and I've kind of stayed very historical with mm. it. Um, but I will hit on Patagonia to start off with. What was that? What was that? that was... <laughs> was that you? No, that wasn't. I've not moved. That wasn't that, was, me. that wasn't me. I swear to God, that wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't move. But I just heard a. That was like a knock. Yeah. One, one, two. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. That was weird. That was not me. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking around. 
What was that? <laughs> okay, that was odd. <laughs> it was weird. Tap once for yes. Tom and place. Yeah, yeah, we're not ready for the ghost hunting quite. No, yet. not just yet. No, <laughs> more to come. Yeah, to be continued. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So Patagonia yes. um, is the most southern part of Argentina and Chile. Right. Um, <laughs> that's just what you said in the talk. <laughs> <laughs> <What was that? laughs> um, yeah, it's the most southern point of. Uh, uh, of Argentina and Chile, and mm. it, it's stretched from the Andes Mountains over to the Atlantic Ocean. Andy? Andy, yeah. Andy, over there. Oh, I am? Oh, yeah, okay. that, that one. Thank you. That's been popular to get his own mountain. Nah, he's uh, all by himself. Oh, okay. Desolate. <laughs> Desolate. <laughs> he's barren. <laughs> but yeah, this one, um, it starts in, 15, in the 1520s. Yes. And it's uh, Captain Ferdinand, Ferdinand Magellan. Okay. And his crew reportedly found a race of giants when they was exploring in the fifteen twenties. Okay. Um, Antonio Pigafetta. Pigafetta. They were Portuguese. That's <laughs> a <so> close. <laughs> <laughs> a crew member and chronicler of uh, Magellan's expedition wrote about the encounter. Now, yeah. one day, we suddenly saw a naked man mm. of giant stature mm -hmm. on the shore of the port, dancing, singing, and throwing dust over his head. Right. <laughs> It's an interesting yeah. view. It's a good start. Our captain, Magellan, sent one of the men to the giant. <laughs> As you do. Come on, boss. You go. Got it. Off you go, mate. <laughs> you go and see what he's about. <laughs> yeah. So that he might perform the same actions as a sign of peace. Do the same sort <laughs> so of So the dance. captain would get naked and <laughs> dance around well, from dust mate, No, no, not the captain. He sent his mate out to do it. <laughs> oh, he sent the mate out. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Out of your clothes, mate. <laughs> off your pop. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So having done that, the man led the giant to where the captain was waiting, and when the giant was in the captain's and our present, he marvelled greatly and made signs with one finger raised upward, believing that we had come from the sky. Which is interesting. Okay, yeah, interesting. He was so tall that we had that we had reached only to his waist, and right. he was well proportioned. Well, that's what she said. <laughs> Oh, we've got we've got we've got nearly forty minutes into it. It's only the second one. Only the second dick joke. That's, I'm disappointed actually. Oh, oh, yeah. We've we ourselves there. Must I'm... try hard. Yeah. She said that's that as well. She said. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. Oh my! Yeah, oh my! Yeah. And the uh, the captain, you know, Magellan, then named these people of this sort Patagonia. Oh, right, okay. Now, what's quite interesting about the etymology of Patagonia, or Patagonia is that pata means feet. Okay. And gone apparently means big. Right, okay. So, big foot. If you, yeah, yeah. If you were to take the whole etymology of it, the, the words Patagonia meaning land of the big feet. Wow. I do have a, a, an origin myself now. Yeah, you do indeed. <laughs> Bloody Patagonian. <laughs> don't strip off and start chucking dust above your head, though. No, yeah. it's too, too yeah. early for that. It's a bit too small for this room. <laughs> A bit too close, a bit too... Uh, yeah, a bit too uh, intimate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you worse snakes. <laughs> that you have. <laughs> but yes, yeah, Spain in the 1500s. Yes. Uh, 1597, Sir Francis Drake's ship. Um, mm -hmm. His ship's chaplain, Francis Fletcher, wrote about in, um, encountering very tall Patagonian natives as well. Right, OK. So he says, Magellan was not altogether deceived in naming them giants. For they generally differ from the common sort of men, both in stature, strength of body, and also in hideousness of their voice. Wow, okay. So apparently they, they speak pretty awfully. Right, okay. Right? Uh, in 1590s, William Adams, Englishman on board the Dutch ship, um, ground Tierra de Fuego, uh, reported a hostile encounter between his ship's crew and abnormally and tall and powerful natives. So again, in South right, America, okay. this is. Yeah. Um, in 1766, Captain John Byron, um, who had circumnavigated the world in his uh, HMS Dolphin, right, and it got it got out that one of the crew had seen a ten foot tall giants in South America. The official account of Byron's voyage um, appeared in 1973, and it recounts when we came within a little distance from the shore. We saw, as near as I can guess, about 500 people, some on foot, 
but the greater part on horseback. One of them, who afterwards appeared to be the chief, came towards me. He was of a gigantic stature, and these people named he'd more properly be called giants than tall men. Bloody hell. So straight up. But yeah, no missing about, just like no, straight to the point. Absolutely. So, and this is what, so we're finding these in South America up until the 1760s. Right. So, and nothing else since. So, like, what happened to these yeah. these people, these, these... And what's more concerning is that there were horses big enough to fucking carry them. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you get some... You get some big boys as it is. Some of the Shire so. horses yeah. they are huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wouldn't even reach their bloody shoulders for some of them. So they must be jumping on them at the very least. Yeah, there's a minimum. That's, yeah, a, that's like, like a pony to them. <laughs> exactly. But the, what I find interesting is that nothing since then has come out. Nothing. But it is no. detailed on ancient maps. Yeah. The land of the giants mm. at Patagonia, specifically that part of yeah. South America, is there's always a depiction of giant mm. people. Which I think is really weird. I mean, you you could you could say that maybe they were troglodytes. They could be cave dwellers or something yeah. that they'd had to maybe. Well, it's, yeah, it's believed that they are one of many cryptids that have come from the from the inner the earth cave sort of thing. system. Yeah, basically, and, and yeah. the inner earth uh, stories is very prominent in the Americas as well. Yeah, with the ancient cultures that there are um, other races that live mm. within the yeah. earth. Yeah. Um, that you know went down there to survive the great flood. Yeah, and they never bothered coming back out. Oh, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> you stick going at once and be like, nope. 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 Go back <laughs> into that. Yeah. <laughs> but now but. I'm moving on to the stuff that got me really excited. Okay, here we go. Now I'm this gonna... is a book, a book that I found. Um, right. Quite a number of weeks ago. Um, okay. And I ordered it. You did. And I didn't look at it. No. Until two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, so I, I speed read through it. Yeah. Um, and it's The Giants of Stonehenge and Ancient Britain by Hugh Newman and Jim Vieira. Okay, just now, before we get serious, I, I, did, I saw something quite funny um, the other day that basically suggested that the Easter Island heads would like the, the head of the giant and their body basically went all through the earth and their toes were Stonehenge. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. I do imagine like their, idea. their heads poking out at, yeah, yeah, on yeah. Easter Island and then their bodies all through the earth and then their toes Whacking pop out. Whacking great giants. <laughs> <laughs> Tips of their toes pop out I Stonehenge. Like that yeah. That's pretty cool, I like that. Well, this, um, these two seem to have worked together on yes. previous books and previous uh, publications. Mm. Um, the, the one book that I, I remember um, uh, Mysterious Universe reviewing, oh, yeah. and it was uh, Giants on Record, and that was fascinating. They did that a couple of years ago, I think it was. Um, but then they, they realised that during, during the, uh, the writing of Giants on Record that they, had, they couldn't dedicate just one chapter to Giants of Britain. Mm. Um, so they brought out their own whole book. Um, now, what's quite interesting is the, 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 the story of it all. So right. Britain, before it became Britain, before it was named Britain by, by the Romans, was called Albion. Oh, right. Okay. Now, this is something I didn't know. No. Um, now, what they say is the megalithic structures in Britain um, are all built by the giants. Now, up until yeah. like the the eighteen hundreds, it was just a given yeah. that these stone circles and such were all built by the giants. Yeah. Um, now, the actual race of giants themselves, they say, came from lost, sunken lands. Okay. Which was which, an interesting yeah. thing. There's, well, we've covered we covered something similar way back in the first. Uh, episode. Indeed, we? something very, very similar to yeah. that. I think um, it seems to be a bit more further afield by what they, right. what the authors were maybe suggesting from this was that, that potentially they may have come from a land like Atlantis. Oh, also rather, rather, land rather, under sea than yeah, as so now, been submerged. Well, yeah, well, well for the, going back maybe 10,000 years, mm. more like 12 or 13,000 years, sea levels were 400 metres lower than what they are today. Oh wow! So there's there's huge swathes of land that are mm. now 
fully submerge that we're not we're not doing any sort of archaeological digs on them mm. or anything like that. We we did speak about Doggerland before and the yeah, Dogger so Bank, the one. Yeah. where they're doing trawling and yeah. they're bringing up all these mammoth bones and they're digging yeah. up um, like stone tools and mm. stuff like this. So we know that there yeah. was habitation yeah. in that area. That area, yeah. Thousands of years ago, before the sea levels rose. It was a stretch of land. For those that can't remember back then, it was a stretch of land between West England and. France, which pretty it? much stretched which all the way over to Denmark, really. Denmark, well. right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, but it yeah. was it was um, a lower land, lower level of what is the the continent of Europe. Yeah. But it basically joined Britain to Europe at that time, so the channel didn't exist at that point. Yeah, basically, yeah. just a just a pissy little river. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could easily swim across that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't do that anymore. No, not easily. Anyway, no, definitely not. Um, so. There are hundreds of records of massive bones being found across Britain as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. Found one in particular. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So Britain <laughs> itself, um, or Albion, should I say, yeah. um, is said to have been um, founded by the giants of Albion. Right. Now, Albion itself was the son of Poseidon. So we get a little bit Greek okay. on this. Um, and Albion was supposed to be the bringer of knowledge and technology. Right, okay. So it, this also follows a similar sort of uh, mythology to um, Prometheus, um, to Lucifer, the light bringer. Mm. You know, that he is the, the, the bringer of light, knowledge, mm. yeah. um, technology. Um, Which is why he's the devil. Indeed. <laughs> Mrs. Boucher gets involved again. <laughs> That's it. Um, but what I found is that there's also another story to it. Right. And um, this is, uh, comes from the Greek source from like the 1400s, which comes from earlier sources. So they say that, um, I can't remember who it was, that, that I didn't write their name down, the, the, this source from the 1400s, but it came from an earlier source from that even still. Right, okay. And it's of Albina and her right. sisters. Now, Albina was... Um, she was a princess of a king from the from Israel, I think, and it came at the time of judgment from um, Jephasis. I think oh, I'm probably making that. I'm okay. probably defacing that name. Um, but basically, they were judged, right. her and her sisters, and um, they were cast out of Israel. Right. Okay. Um, she had thirty three sisters, so Wowzers. this king was. Uh, we're putting it about a bit. Yeah. He probably <laughs> had a harem, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, and they, they were cast out of Israel and they came to this island and they decided to call it Albion. Right. In okay. name of Albina, the, right. the eldest sister. Okay. Now, it's said as well that um, the devil took the form of man right. and dwelt among these wicked women. Okay. And we all know what dwelt yeah, among them means, don't worry. Yeah. We all know what dwelt among them means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. And uh, in turn, they created giants and giantesses out of this marriage, out of this okay. union yeah. of these human women yeah. and this devil yeah. or this fallen angel. Yeah. Okay, and it ties in very, ties very in. closely yeah. with that idea of the watchers mating with the, the, humans. the women of, of, yeah. of men. Um, and they multiplied and they occupied the land for a very, very long time mm. until Brutus conquered them and drove them out. Now, Brutus was um, defeated in the Trojan War and with his exile he sailed to Britain um, and in order to conquer Britain yeah. he had to take out all the giants. Now we know that, that Brutus did come here because he founded um, Troia Nued or New Troy okay. which became uh, Trinovantum right. which then became London. Oh, so this okay. was the founding of London, and it was called Trinovantum. Wow. Okay. And it was in uh, 47 AD that King mm. Lud changed the name from Trinovantum to basically Lud Town. Lud Town, right. Lud okay. Town, and then eventually it became London. Right, okay. So that was a little... Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, didn't know that. I didn't know about that. I knew that <coughs> London had a, a very rich history. Mm. 
But I didn't know that. You know, it, that far back. No, I didn't know that it went back for, as far as Brutus. Yeah. You know, the Trojan War and all that. Um, but Lovely. in between the time of Albina getting to the British Isles and Brutus getting to the British Isles, it seemed like it was anywhere between four to six hundred years. Now, it seems like, based on the, 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 the story, the mythology of it, yeah. is that Albina and her sisters, um, they were cast out of Israel for being a bit too horny. Okay. They were a bit promiscuous. Right, so. Um, yeah. And they remained promiscuous. And because there was no other people on this land, right. they would mate with their sons and their nephews. So there's this... Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. <laughs> it's getting a little bit Game of Thrones. It is. <laughs> yeah. But if you can imagine it, for anywhere between four to six hundred years of, of giant interbreeding mm. as well. So yeah. these giants were interbreeding with themselves. And as we know, where interbreeding comes in, they their IQ be... drops a little bit, yeah. don't they? So it's that idea of their dumb... Yeah. lumbering yeah. hogs yeah. that are stupid, they don't know anything, mm. etc, etc. Now, it turns out as well that people, like, they, they often went, well, how did Brutus take over a land full of giants? Mm. You know, little people, how the hell did he do it? Mm. Well, it turns out in that four to 600 years, there was a civil war between these giants and okay. ended up only being 24 of them left and they were, they, their home was Cornwall. And it makes sense, all the inbreeding. <gasps> How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> but there's a, there's a really famous um, giant from Cornwall called Gog Magog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I've heard of it. Yeah, 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 so Gog Magog was one of those last... Um, those last the last giants. of these kinds yeah. of thing, yeah. I've and for a long it, yeah. time, that people thought that he was about 12 foot tall. <coughs> yeah. But actually, at the time of Brutus being able to measure the size yeah. of these people, um, they used cubits. So 12 cubits exactly. would yeah. equate to 18 to 20 feet tall. Mm. And he, apparently he was so large and so strong that he could uproot an oak tree and use it as a wand. Or a cricket bat. Or a cricket bat. <laughs> yeah. See you <Wallet>. later. <laughs> yeah, bye bye now. Incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Now, that's nuts. This is like the, the, the legend of the, the British giants and, and such, and it seems yeah. like um, just for the longest time, people just mm. took that as gospel. Yeah. Um, now, I've got one of the earliest depictions of Stonehenge, right? Okay. Now, this is, uh, it's got a name, it's Le Roman de Brut by a poet. It's Wace. That's how it's spelled. W A C E. I'm probably saying yeah, that wrong. Yes. And it's circa 11:55. Tell me what that shows you. It looks like a giant is building Stonehenge. It looks like a giant <laughs> building Stonehenge. And in that we do we have a giant, we have uh, Merlin, oh, and okay. we have King Ambrosius. In right. There. Okay. Um, now Merlin has a very very tight tight tie to the whole giant mythology and the giant legend. Right. Um, now, the history of Kings of Britain, mm. which was written by Geoffrey Monmouth in 1136, right. he ties this in really, really closely with Arthur Arthurian tales yeah. as well. And yeah. it speaks heavily of giants in this particular mm -hmm. telling of, of the story itself. Yeah. Now, Merlin was said to have constructed and relocated a massive stone monument in honour of the 460 plus slain warriors who were defeated by Hingust, Hingust the Saxon, by orders of King Aurelius. So, wow. it seems like there was a great big invasion of the land yeah. and King Aurelius slaughtered a load of them. Um, in a load the, of these giants? Yes. Right. So, in so the 12th century. So, Stonehenge is possibly a giant memorial mm. in both senses of the word. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, it, this is where this is where it gets a bit strange because it seems like um, based on a twelfth century source, which is copied from earlier sources. Again, it's yeah. like they find these scrolls and they go, "Oh, I'll, I'll translate." I'll make that. a note of that. Yeah, I'll translate yeah. that. Um, it claims that the giants that the, the giants transported the stones from Africa, but we wow. know the blue stones come from um, they come from around Liverpool way. Right, okay. So we know that they come from a quarry up near Liverpool, the blue stones, 
but the large stones, I don't think we've actually been able to find exactly where they come from. That's interesting. Well, because you'd probably have to take a chunk of them off to yeah. test it, wouldn't you, I guess? Now, I've got another picture to show you. Right, okay. This picture is old photos of the Trilithon near Tripoli in Libya. Now, tell the listeners what that looks like. <laughs> I mean, that yeah, that basically looks like a carbon copy of Stonehenge, Stonehenge as we know it now yeah. in its in its size, yeah. Yeah. Right, in Libya. In wow. Libya. That is almost... Exactly the same. Yeah. That's just outside of Tripoli. You can tell it's an actual black and white photo. It's a very oh, old photo yeah, as well. Very old. And we'll put we'll put this on the, the socials as well, so yeah. you guys can see all these photos as well. Yeah. But I wanted to see Callum's reaction to yeah, this as well as we went along. Yeah. But it seems like as well that along with all of these stories of the giants as well, they have, they seem to have um, access to magic and mm. access to technologies that the humans didn't seem to really understand. So it may have seemed that. That them carrying the stones from Africa is it maybe a bit of an allegory, maybe a bit of symbolism because right. they could only the, the translations could only use the language that they had and the references that they had right then. Right. Same okay. way we do. If we yeah, were to yeah. find an ancient, the way we're looking at the Book of Enoch. Yeah. Uh, you look at the Book of Enoch, you go, well, that's a flying saucer. Yeah. You call it a silver moon coming down to the earth. You know. Yeah. That that's a flying saucer. It's a, yeah. All day long. Yeah. So yeah. we use they, they use the language that they had available to them. Yeah. But it yeah. seems more likely that because they possess this magic and such that allowed them to mould the stones. Right. So they used heat and liquefying of the rock to build massive structures. Now we've got legends all the way across the world. Um, you think about Machu Picchu in Peru. Mm. They've got these uh, what they call them um, polygonal. Uh, stone walls right and if you do look at pictures of them yeah they're the gaps between the stones you can't even put a razor blade in them they're that tight there's no right. mortar yeah the rocks are put together just be, yeah seemingly carved mm. now the idea is there was um it was a french uh, material scientist his name escapes me but he basically says that these monuments were made out of um a poly cement so they right. were they were made out of they basically they were poured they weren't built, and he includes the great pyramids with this as well. That the great pyramids right. weren't cut and dragged, but they were poured in place, exactly where they needed right. to be, which is interesting. It's a phenomenal. So con- so essentially, concrete was poured into these giant shapes, which left us with what we now know is, as yeah. the, the pyramids, for example. But there's also, the, there's also um, the, the technology itself. There are loads of, because um, I'm going to digress a little bit with this, but there are loads of pictures from um, North Africa, mm. um, Upper Sahara, of yeah. rocks that look like they've got like, scoop marks out of them. And it's right. not erosion, because it's too... Yeah. It, it, it's, it's too uniform. Yeah. It's too uniform for it to be that to be that yeah. way. It's like they were scooped out, like they were slid off. So there was a way of 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 liquefying or softening the rock in order to mould it in a certain way, right. which is mind blowing. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah. Absolutely mind blowing. And yeah. when you take into account the idea that Albion, the mm. giant Albion, was supposed to be the bringer of knowledge and technology. Yeah. I mean, further on into this book, they, they, they detail essentially weapons. So there's things like, um, there's, there's a little callback to a giant that has a giant eye that essentially fires a laser beam out of it. Right, so an actual cyclops. An actual, well, not, technically not a cy- cyclops, but... Just one giant eye. Something that is placed upon a tower... Ah, oh, yeah. Now you know where I'm going. Eye, with this. Know you're going a giant eye yeah. that's placed upon a tower that moves with gears and cogs, that fired um, a beam of light that would set anything on fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm dropping, I'm dropping a lot of stuff from this book because this yeah, book yeah. was just like mind blowing. Yeah, and yeah. I'm probably absolutely butchering exactly what comes out of this book, but. <laughs> Because I, I just skimmed through it, I was like, oh, right. crap, make a note of that, holy crap, yeah, yeah, yeah. make a note of that. Absolutely brilliant. But I want to get back to the giants that were said to have built Stonehenge, and they are the uh, Kanjik giants. Okay. And they are said, said to be the ancient race that are said to have built um, Stonehenge, and they were warriors. Right. And they were um, said to also be slightly ethereal. Okay. Now, there's a book that 
um, came out in 1666 and by Reverend Robert Gay. And he believed... <laughs> Sorry, I knew you. Sorry. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing. Well, no, no? Do you want to elaborate on that? At all? No, I'll leave it there. Okay. <laughs> I think we all know what I'm laughing at. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Now, he believes, Reverend Robert, believes that Stonehenge was built by these old Britons. So... And they were said to be a semi-divine warrior race, much that of much larger people, and they're said to be very, very different from the new or current Britons. So right, okay. it's almost like um, when the humans started coming over and they mm. started actually interacting over here, mm. like they are the new Britons. The old Britons, they were the ones before the Druids. The, the sort of the, the natives or the Aboriginals, if you like. Exactly, and they were said to be of much larger stature than us. Right. Um, now, the Canic Giants are related to a discovery that's made in, in 1191 mm. at Glastonbury Abbey. Right. right. <laughs> okay. And they were, this discovery was made by the monks, and they said that they followed the miraculous signs, and they don't say exactly what those miraculous signs were, mm. to a spot that was set between these two 26-foot-tall pyramids. They existed right. in the 1100s. I don't think they exist now, no. because I think we'd know if there was you two pyramids in yeah. Glastonbury. Yeah. Um, but they were said to have existed at this point. Now, when they, dis when they found these signs and sent them to this spot, they consulted with King Henry II, um, who said that he had some secret knowledge about that location that's been passed down through the royal lineage. Now... What they found out, he decided to, okay, well, you found this, i let you in on it. It's said to be the burial ground of King Arthur, that spot in particular. Right? <laughs> right. Now, this is where he gets really interesting. Yeah. So the, monk, the monks decided to dig down, and when they got to approximately seven feet, they found a lead cross with a Latin inscription on it. <clears throat> Have a go, go on. <laughs> Hic jacet sepultus. Inquisus Rexus Arturius in Insula Avalonia. Did it right there, didn't yeah, right. right. yeah, I? I just summoned a demon somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that translates to here lies the famous King Arthur on the Isle of Avalon. And so they okay. continue to dig and they dive a little only, bit deeper. Just to interject, go, on, go for it. My only scepticism yep. with that is at that point. He wouldn't have been that famous. Exactly. So, well, unless you're you suggesting about the actual, you thinking about the quest for the Holy Grail, the book, the story, the quest for the Holy Grail that in, encompassed King Arthur, which mm. was written by a Frenchman, wasn't it? Mm. And that was when was that written? Oh, for God, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea. Absolutely well, no idea. Well, if it was the twelfth century. It wasn't published by Penguin, I know that, so it wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't recent. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Penguin! <laughs> yeah, so it was a much earlier source then. Exactly, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a, Self -published, there's a little bit of contention <laughs> about the actual finding of the cross itself. Right, okay. Um, because uh, they, just recently, the Abbey had burnt down at that point, uh -huh. and obviously they, they were broke, <laughs> so they needed, uh -huh. they needed to attract right, people okay. in. To rebuild the abbey. To rebuild it, yeah. So there is a bit of bone of contention with regards okay. to the actual finding of this iron cross. Yeah. However, they okay. definitely did find at about eighteen feet below the surface. Right. An oak coffin, solid oak coffin, that inside held a skeleton that was nine feet tall. Right. A full skeleton okay. that was nine <laughs> feet tall. So we're suggesting that. Arthur was a, a, a giant. A gigante. <laughs> and a gigante. A gigante. It's <laughs> a so possibility. It's a wow. possibility. And apparently there was also a female skeleton there too that had blonde hair that just disintegrated when they touched it. So right. seemingly incredibly ancient mm. burial right there. So there might be a little bit of truth to the story of King Arthur. Oh, King Arthur, wow. Then, you know. And not only made... that, but he was a sodding giant as well. Sodding giant. Yeah. But also, what I found, again, in that area, right. 
um, there seems to be, there was um, an island village um, called Godney, and okay. archaeological digs um, over time have they've come across these various giant bows that's seven foot long. So like a long bow, but mm. obviously a hell of a lot bigger. Just longer, a longer bow. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'll, I'll show you a picture of it. And this gentleman in it, Cyril Lilly, is um, six foot four. So he's not far off of what you so are, So he's mate. not, yeah. All right? Look at the size of that bow. Bloody hell, yeah. Now, these bows were found in like layers of black peat. So they've been incredibly well preserved. So mm. much so that they're pretty much pristine and in perfect condition. Yeah. Even the carvings on the bows are you can they're detailed, right? Um, and they're completely fully intact. And like I said, they're seven foot tall. And these bows can't be used by regular sized men. No, the too, poundage on that would be ridiculous. They're too cumbersome. Yeah, exactly. You the, know the about drawer archery. on that would have to be a machine. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, look, he's only pulling it back a, a yeah, touch. There's hardly any tension on that. So, yeah. We wouldn't have yeah. the, the the lateral muscles for it. We wouldn't or have the, the, the arm span to, for yeah. it. it. Just wouldn't happen. Yeah. However, it would fit someone who is eight or nine feet tall, at the very least. Wow. That's nuts. It's interesting. <laughs> and that, that, that gentleman there, he's, yeah, he's, he's the same as well. He's so, about my height, yeah. Yeah, you guys will get to see that on the socials as well. So yeah, we'll post we'll that, that out yeah. so you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Mm. Um, but it isn't just bows that, that have been found in archaeological digs um, across the UK. Various different um, huge swords, axes, hammers... They've been found in all sites across, and they're they're sharp and they're functional. Oh wow! Um, even like think about like um, like the Scottish claymores, those those huge claymore swords, and mm. there's been some that are like seven foot tall. And you think, yeah. how can you hold that and swing it? Yeah. How can a man, <laughs> yeah, even a six foot man, yeah. swing that about on a battlefield? Yeah, he couldn't. No, but a bloke that was maybe a bit taller, mm. double the size, maybe 12, 13 yeah. feet. Yeah, no problem. No swing, problem yeah. swing that around like a, yeah. like a cat and nine tails. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, so this is the thing though. This what what I said about the experts being really wishy washy. So with these large weapons, yeah, they're just said to be ceremonial. Right. Okay. I was just yeah. oh, it's a large axe. It's a ceremonial axe. That's a large sword or ceremonial. Because you'd, you'd need to build it that big yeah. for ceremony, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, you'd still build it in proportion, wouldn't you? Well, unless you're if it was for yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the Ferrari of the uh, <laughs> Ferrari of the weapon world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so like, I found that to be really, really interesting. Um, That's really interesting, man. Yeah, I mean, especially the Arthurian stuff as well. But what I will end on is this: it's the top ten yeah, largest skeletons. Yeah. Found in the UK now. Okay. I'm going to show you this as well. You right. might be a bit shocked. Have a look at that, mate. And I'll start with number ten. Okay. Yeah. This one comes out of Wales and it's seven foot. So two seven feet tall skeletons in a burial with hazel down dowsing rods were unearthed at the base of the Kadir Idris of Kadir Idris in Wales in 1685 by peat diggers. The mountain is the mythical home of Idris Gore, the giant Idris, who was one of three holy astronomers of Britain and was also a renowned king who ruled in the 6th century. So he's at seven foot tall. Number nine is St Michael's Mount in Cornwall, at eight feet wow. tall. Yeah. An eight foot tall skeleton was discovered in the early 1800s at St Michael's Mount inside a narrow dungeon cut in a solid rock which is now the crypt below the chapel. Ancient myths talk of Camoran, the giant, who was killed by Jack of the Jack the Giant Killer. So maybe. Wow, it's the Jack. Jack and the, the Giant. The talks actually. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, number eight is Lundy Island in Devon, eight foot seven inches tall. In 1856, two skeletons were discovered in the south part of the island. One was eight foot five inches, and the other one was eight foot seven inches. They were buried in stone-lined graves with several other average-sized skeletons. In old legends, rock-wielding giants, who were masters of sorcery, were said to be buried there, who, and I quote, were driven there from bases in Cornwall, and that they angrily hurled rocks back at the mainland. Now, ancient stories and legends talk about two giants that... Mm. Um, 
casually reformed the land mm. using geomancy. Mm. And the way they would do it was they would hurl rocks at each other. And the other one, another a slight twist on that particular tale, is they, very much like Thor, they would throw a hammer in straight lines. So they'd be doing their to work. To break them up as they throw it? Or no, no, but they'd be doing their work, but then they'd, once they'd finished, they'd chuck it in a straight line to wherever the other giant was, and the other giant would hear it, and he'd catch it. And it turns out that a lot of these legends of giants mm. and, and the locations of them yeah. sit on um, ley lines. These energy lines, these energy ley grids. Lines again. Yeah. yeah, ley lines again. So they, they sit on these lines and they would say that it'd be from one town to another. And mm. that on in a direct straight line, that is exactly on the same ley line. So number That's seven. Yeah. Yeah. Glastonbury Abbey, the one I've just spoken about, not at yeah. all. Um, so I've already gone over that. The remains of King Arthur. Yeah, but, uh, supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so cool, though? That'd be awesome. That'd be yeah. so cool. Number six comes from Orkney at 10 foot tall. So this is a major megalithic tomb on the mainland of Orkney in Scotland, dating to around 2800 BC. In 1861, it was reported that the 10 foot tall skeleton and two mummies were found inside. <coughs> Another account from 1529 reveals that a 14 foot skeleton was also unearthed in the area, although this could be the same find. Right. So, number five is Glenelg Brock in Scotland at 11 feet tall. At the 2000 year old Dun Tell of Brock in Glen. <laughs> in Glenelg. <laughs> <laughs> Ach du. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Two remarkable skeletons were discovered, one approximately eight and a half feet and the other one almost 11 feet tall. This is uh, one of many stone towers found in Scotland and the local area was known as the Field of Big Men. Wow, okay. Number four is in County Mayo, Ireland at 12 foot six inches. The famous St. Patrick may have been the first ever archaeologist and whilst digging up ancient graves he discovered an over 12 foot long skeleton of an ancient warrior and a long barrow in Ireland. Also in the tomb was a huge axe and gigantic sword. But St. Patrick dispersed the bones, as any good Christian would, Absolutely. <laughs> and ancient weaponry after trying to save the soul of the pagan giant and apparently sent him to heaven. So he had good right, intentions. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, as they all do. St. Patrick was uh, known for driving the snakes out of Ireland. Right, okay. Yeah, there's no snakes I thought we just Ireland. drank Guinness. Is that, is that the same one? <laughs> I think it's... Or, or am I getting confused? Could, I could have been that one. <laughs> yeah, the snakes were uh, pagans. He drew the pagans out of uh, okay. Ireland. One of those, right. Mm -hmm. There was no snakes. No. There was no snakes Metaphor, in Ireland. Metaphor, sadly, yeah. Number three. They were <clears> the top three people. <clears throat> St. Bees in Cumbria. 13 foot 6 inches. In the early 1800s, Hugh Hodgson dug up a nearly 14 foot tall giant in cornfields in St. Bees, Cumbria. The skeleton still had full armour, a huge sword, an axe measuring over two yards long. Bloody hell. The finds were distributed between the local villagers. Number two, Stonehenge, Wiltshire, 14 foot 10 inches. In the early 1500s, Sir Thomas Elliot, author, diplomat and scholar, reported on a 14 foot 10 inch skeleton found a few miles south of Stonehenge. Also in a huge oak coffin was an ancient book with mysterious inscriptions upon it. In 1719, a nine foot four skeleton was found in a mound nearby. The earliest recorded name of Stonehenge is the Giant's Dance. Right, okay. And in the legend, the stone circle is said to have been built by a tribe called the Kanjik Giants. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, yeah. Now, this is the, this is the Mac Daddy. Yeah. This is Core Giant. Core Giant? Core Giant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so Core Giant in Northumberland at 21 feet. Wowzers. In 1660, the remains of a stunning skeleton was unearthed at Corbridge, near a section of Hadrian's Wall. It was said mm -hmm. to have measured 21 feet long, and in the early 1800s, another skull was found nearby of immense size. The rib of the giant ended up at Keswick Museum in Cumbria, where other colossal skulls and bones are kept. 
Wow. Well, what can you say here we come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to, but the thing is, road trip. Why do we not know about it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone you know, obviously knows or think they know, particularly about Stonehenge. You know, I'll go with that one because it's the most recognisable out of the list. Yeah. But yeah, there's just all these you know theories that are kind of thrown at you as to you know why it was built and how it was built and you know and all this sort of thing. We don't know but for sure. No this one sort of knows for sure. But when they find things like this buried around it or or, mm. or beneath it, you, you got to think well, like even Stonehenge right now is only what we think it looks like. So we've actually reconstructed it to what I've we think what, it looks yeah. like. Now, this it's, is, just, it's just rows and rows of stone circles, isn't it? For technically, mile, a couple of few that, mile radius or yeah, something. Yeah, like miles. Um, yeah, <clears throat> potentially, and we're, yeah. We're the, they're finding that the stone Stonehenge site is much much bigger mm. than we the originally got thought left. it to be. Yeah. But there, within this book um, that I've been reading, the purpose of Stonehenge was basically to be a healing bath. So the idea right. was that these stones are of, of healing quality. So the blue stones in particular are supposed to be of healing quality. There's lots of people right. in the, the New Age circles and such. There are people right. that have... Is that um, why people get naked and hold hands? Oh, no, that's mushrooms. It, or, oh, that's mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that's drugs. You go. That's drugs. Okay. That's all the psilocybin. Right? That's what that is. <laughs> got nothing to do with the stones. <laughs> Well, no, no, honestly, like, that's, yeah. that's one of the things that they've been saying about all these various different stone circles. So the idea of Stonehenge, according to um, the, 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 the book by uh, Newman and Vieira, is that it was supposed to be uh, like a sickness bath. So when they, were, when they were sick, they would spend some time within this, they'd bathe, and the stones would absorb the illness. So right. this supposedly is supposed to be the purpose of these stone circles. Which is a question that keeps coming up from from James, our, our Patreon. Like, yeah, yeah. What is what are these stone circles? What are they yeah. about? Where how are they made? And because well, seems... there were there were others near what we know as Stonehenge. There are others that they found hinges. not that far mm. from. Well, like, I've been, been to same... Woodhenge as well, yeah. which is um, just a, I think a mile or two north mm. of, of of Stonehenge itself. And luckily enough, me and Sam have been able to visit both. Mm. And Stonehenge itself is incredible. The, the it's such a strange feeling, mm. such a strange feeling when you're just on these rolling hills and everything and there's almost nothing around you. And like even the, the, the guide was saying to us, we've got trees dotted all over the place. He said, well, supposedly when this was built, there was no trees. It was just an open plain. So it's just out there in, by itself on these rolling hills. Mm. The wind was not kicking into us. It was, it was like the sound was just reverberating. If you stand right in the middle, mm. the sound reverberates around you. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible feeling being yeah. there. But it's... What I like about what these guys have put forward is that potentially yeah. it's, it could have been poured and built. Mm. You know, that yeah. these giant stones might actually be of a polymer cement rather than an actual stone that's carved. and Like natural stone, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man-made. As opposed to natural or giant made or giant made, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, we've been saying this for quite a while. It seems like we have lost the ability to recognize a different technology, mm. you know, that maybe we had access to technologies mm. that we that we've just now gone down a completely different path with. So, yeah. we had the potential of building with all these natural materials mm. that we're just choosing not to do anymore, yeah, you know, we're. we're Maybe because we weren't, we're not fourteen feet tall. We can't. There's always that. <laughs> yeah, we can't adequately shape it. Or, There's always that. You know. But yeah, I, I was just, I found that book, and I, I've, I haven't even covered half of what that book has to say. So, Blimey. if you guys do want to go and have a look at it, I suggest that you do. And it's the Giants of Stonehenge and Ancient Britain by Hugh Newman and Jim Vieira. Um, stunning, mm. stunning book. Um, some brilliant theories putting forward. They've taken all of the mythology and legend that surrounds the British Isles, yeah. and they've been able to put it in such a concise way, so much better than what I've, I've been able to do today. Because <laughs> yeah. I've just gone no, words for it. It's been good. Yeah. yeah, it's been really intriguing. Like um, some of it, I didn't even didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, and uh, it also ties in with those legends of the Watchers and the yeah. Children of Men becoming giants as yeah. well, with Albina and her sisters mm. and. 
you know, the devil dwelling within them and, yeah, exactly, and everything yeah. else like that. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. Very much so. so. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, thanks for bringing that with, uh, to us. Yeah. With all of that. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the word, man? How are you getting off the fence? <laughs> I, I think, as, as I've said before, I think in other episodes, you know, it's not, I don't think it's a case of coming off the fence. You know, I think the, I think the evidence is there and speaks for itself. Mm. I mean, you can choose to believe it or or not. I, you know, I guess that's up to you. But because the one, the number one question that we'll get now from mm. anyone that's listened to this is, well, okay, where can I go and see these skeletons? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's and that'd be a fair question. It'd be to, a fair question. Ask. Yeah, and as we've, you know, uncovered. You know, in, in this episode, you know, there are some museums around the country that are holding parts of, you know, these mm. skeletons. But, you know, I guess getting off the fence, I'd sort of start off with, you know, I, I, I believe it. Um, you know, we've got real world evidence, you know, we've got skeletons, we've got locations, we've got years and dates of when they were found. You know, we've we've got texts from, you know, thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Yeah that reference their existence and interactions and, you know, descriptions and everything else, you know. I mean, I, I didn't even go over, you know, the story that everyone knows of David and Goliath. Yeah, yeah I was expecting you to go over yeah. that, but... Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I didn't imagine because everyone kind of knows, you know, sort of what it is, but it's believed that, you know, that he was... The, the Goliath was, was only, I say only, was only like 12 feet, 12 feet tall. Mm. So he wasn't the... The, you know the giant or Goliath that pop culture has, uh, you know, allowed you to you know refer to it as, as being you know thirty, forty, fifty yeah. feet tall or whatever, like an absolute monster. He, he was just a, a t- he was just a tall humanoid. Well, you know, seems to be. And 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 that's and that was that's from in, um, uh, translations of you know things like you know Genesis and, and other religious yeah. texts that they've kind of deciphered that that's how tall. And that's the interesting part of it as well, yeah. is that, that all these various different ancient texts have gone through various stages of translations yes. as well as the language has evolved and everything. And yeah. it seemed like the point that we made before is that they can only refer to the language that they've got of that day as well. Yes. So it's... Limited by their own sort of language at mm. that point, but then, yeah, as language and everything else progresses, you know, and, and you know, people are able to, you know, look at these texts and say, actually, they, they thought it meant this, but actually it's more likely to mean this because of the time period or the region or mm. how, how educated they were or, you know, whatever it might be, you know. So things are, you know, kind of ever-changing, um, you know, and, and so reading or, or sort of listening to you speak about that stuff and then thinking back about, you know, what I read about the, the David and Goliath tale, mm. Again, there's there's actually there's probably more to that than just no doubt a religious text or a, you know a fairy tale or whatever. That it, it probably it probably did happen. There'll quite likely be some sort of anthropologist that will have actually taken the time to research it as well and, yeah. and actually look at the various different mm. uh, language that's being used within the original Hebrew text. Yeah. So it's taking out all of that King James stuff, all of the various yeah. different translations that have mm. come since then. Go straight back to the original source. Back to the yeah, exactly. And take yeah. it from that. So yeah, that Absolutely. would be really interesting. What you know, because like um, like we said before, they were using cubits, not feet. And yeah. cubits are you know they're larger than feet. Mm. You know, so um, I think it was uh, Gog Magog, wasn't it? That yeah. they said that was supposed to be twelve feet tall, but it would have been twelve cubits, which would have made him 18, 19, yeah. 20 feet tall. Yeah. Fucking huge. Which based on. You know skeletons that have actually been found in that area mm. again lends itself to the fact that yeah. that particular one actually. But the thing, you know, the thing that I do find um, really worrying about it though is, and I'm going to sound conspiratorial here, yeah. is it seems like these things are hidden, like mm. we're not being told about it. It's not in in the zeitgeist. It's it, it's something you're that we've had to go and find ourselves. Yeah. Now it may. We've had to look within stories and allegory and mm. everything else in order to find yeah. some sort of truth. Mm. Now we all know that as well that with it, with stories comes an element of truth as well. Yeah, because it has to come from something. Exactly. Yeah. So it's even like this idea that um, science fiction pre- is a precursor to science fact. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So when you take that into account, 
those are stories that come in before the real science. So why mm. are we? Why would it not work the other way around? Why would mm. you know we'd not get these stories yeah. before we've made these discoveries? Mm. You know, yeah. What? Why would that not be the case? Yeah. And a, lot, and a lot of people are so quick to just yeah. It's all it's all just uh, fairy tales yeah, and stories yeah, and yeah. everything. But I've, well, certainly I know with regards to the the North American um, skeletons that are being found, the ones that are not being returned to. The ancient burials mm. it's a lot of people a lot of archaeologists out there yeah. out in north america mm. suggesting that maybe the the Smith smithsonian have them in their vaults like bought them up yeah um locked them away mm. um because there's, there's something the Vatican. there's something strange <laughs> happening with regards to archaeology in north america yeah um they're not allowing digs below 13 14 thousand years mm. They're not allowing it. They're not sanctioning it. Mm. Like they say, no, no, no. This is all we need to know. Mm. No digging any further. Yeah, that's all we need to know. That that because yeah, yeah. you know, that fits with the with the story. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Yeah, that you know, humans went from um, Siberia over the the Bering Strait, the land bridge that is now there. Mm. Um, it was no longer there really, but it was there. Um, and they came into North America through that way, but yeah. the genetics are now saying mm. genetics is, is is saying that no, that's not the case. There's people in South America that have been there before the North Americans. Yeah, like how does how mm. does that work? Yeah, you know, but it doesn't fit in with the current narrative. Doesn't fit with the right narrative. Story. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Again, the it's idea like of the giants coming in, and there is a bit of a battle between science and religion. You know, yeah, the, the, the old books and such, and yeah. science does want to go, well, no, that's just that's just stories. It's all just mm. stories. So when evidence does arise that, or maybe there were beings here yeah. that were detailed like the Nephilim, yeah. or like the Yoga from mm. the Norse mythologies, yeah. you know, or the, just, just plain up giants, yeah. but it doesn't fit in with the current scientific yeah. It doesn't fit in with what we want narrative. to know and believe, so we're going to... Yeah. Wash that, and we're going to tell you that it's not true, or yeah. it's just it's like this whole theory of evolution yeah. and such. You know, yeah. it doesn't work for yeah. us because we we don't we haven't found that missing link. Mm. We seem to have been this way for about three hundred thousand years, mm. supposedly. We don't know what came before that. Mm. We don't know how we got to this point. Yeah. And but everyone well, where we came from exactly, <laughs> or, yeah, or where we came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the, so the scully just turned up, we'll yeah. have to go. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, we've got no sound bite or sound board or anything like that, so I've had to whistle that. We had to whistle that, yeah. <laughs> I'll try and get it for post production. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, yeah, I know I'm putting on the conspiratorial, conspiratorial hat, but yeah. it seems like these things are, are being hidden. But it's, a, but it's only conspiracy because other people are not likely to believe it. There's nothing to say that it can't be as true as what anyone else has exactly. sort of come up with because there's just as much evidence to suggest any of it. Mm. It just depends on what you choose to believe as a as a, a narrative. And I think the more we do these things, the more evidence that we find, whether it be from religious texts or literature or you know, whatever it may be, mm. it, it seems to all point in you know the same direction and it unearths the same thing. It's building a much, much bigger picture in every episode that we do, that we find yeah. a, an episode like this, yeah. where it's got a large amount of stories about archaeological digs mm. and things going missing yeah. or, you know, not being put in museums correctly yeah. or anything or like at that. All. Or yeah. at all. Or just yeah. being distributed by a <coughs> saint because yeah. he wishes to save the soul of the pagan, the filthy yeah. pagan. Um, you know, it's like... That seems to be the current narrative that yeah. the, the the people shouldn't know exactly where they come from because I I guarantee you, mate. The moment we find out exactly where we come from, we're not going to be selling our time to some geezer that makes a load of money off of our time. Mm. We're just going to okay. Well, well, what's the meaning of life then? Yeah. We're going to pursue that, you know. <laughs> then all things cease, mm. and I can so I can understand why. It'd be a bit of a reset, wouldn't it? It'd be a huge reset. Mm. I mean, it would be complete and utter chaos. It would oh, actually be carnage, yeah. utter chaos. It would be extinction. And that's when, that's when the theory of evolution will really kick in. Because yeah. then Darwinism will kick the in. The weak and the strong yeah. and the yeah, smart and the brave. And, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it won't be any of this trying to keep the workforce... Hunt will be hunted sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly. You know, real proper chaos theory. Mm. And it will be mob mentality everywhere. So you can understand why if there was an actual solid um, origin mm. and they already know it, yeah. Say they, the powers that be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know what we are. Well, there are people alive from. today that know all of this and oh, the truth and 
what really happened at certain times and you know whatever else it's just that we're not privy to said information we're no, not we're because, not on the right payroll because yeah exactly because we'd go mm. right, well then there's no point in me yeah. doing what I'm doing then. now yeah. then yeah. Yeah. is there you know I might as well continue and try and reach a better point in humanity yeah, yeah. you know it's like the idea of this uh, the great awakening which mm. seems to be a, a, a phrase that's being coined a lot yeah. lately um, and it makes sense because there's such thing you know the, the I believe it's the Eastern um, mysticisms. They they believe that the the cycles are yugas. So they are they call them yugas, and they're cycles of, cycles of ages. So when you also take into account like the Mayan calendar, mm. they said that the end of the world was going to be in twenty twenty twelve. Well, that's a little bit wrong because it's not the end of the world; it's the end of an age. End of an age. And yeah. the age itself is supposed to the end of the age is supposed to last for about sixty years according to other tales from other cultures where it interlinks. Right. Mm. So according to Eastern mysticism, we are within the Kali Yuga, so the age of destruction. Right, okay. And that yeah. makes perfect makes sense, perfect doesn't sense. it? Yeah. Makes perfect sense that we're in the age of destruction right now. With but we're coming toward yeah. the end of it. Yeah. So the the idea is that those in, in the circles with regards to like the new age and mm. the mysticisms and the spirituality and such, they very much believe that Okay, we're coming toward the end of the Kali Yuga, so the Great Awakening is going to happen. So there are going to be people that are going to be start connecting more with spirit, mm. that they're becoming less material, you know, that they're that they're starting to wake up to the much larger world that there is out there, the much yeah. larger universe that yeah. that is available to us, and that we don't have to be on this rat race of nine to five. Mm. That there is so much more mm. to it than just selling your time. Yeah. To someone else, so that they can make more money up than you. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, <laughs> sounded a bit like power to the people. Power right to that. the people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not one of them, honestly. <laughs> the revolution starts here, people. <laughs> yeah, we've had nearly hundred followers on yeah, Facebook. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we're nearly at hundred. We are. We're at ninety-seven. Yeah. Like, last, well, last check. So, guys, get sharing. Let's get, get sharing. Get we really, really, really yeah. appreciate that. That'd be awesome, yeah. Thank you, for, thank you for that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, yeah, I think we sort of. I think yeah, in summary, the majority we, of it. But I think in summary, we both sort of be, you know believe it would be on that side of the yeah. fence for what we've presented, not only you know today in, in fairness, but in in previous episodes that are all of a you know a similar ilk because they're all they're all connected in you know in in, in some way. I mean, it it, is. The, the thing for me, with, you know, with the you know the religion side of things, you know, specifically is that. All very different religions, as they would have you believe, but they all seemingly come from a, a, you know the same source material. Yeah. If you you know if you work it back far enough. Well, if, yeah, if you think about the, the, the three <coughs> big religions, you know you've got uh, Catholicism, uh, Judaism, and Islam. They are referred to as Abrahamic religions, uh, monotheistic. Abrahamic re- religions, which because they all come from the same area, mm. they all come from the area that's known as the Levant, mm. which is now modern day Israel and, and Palestine, and the, so th- there's a connection right there. Yeah. Why there are millions and next? millions of people believe that, mm. and all of these come from that same you know source. So when you start seeing that things like trolls and giants and whatever else come from that same source material yet just hasn't been turned into a mainstream belief like a lot of the other belief, mm. uh, parts of that have, it, make, it makes you wonder why has that been, it, you know, left out? Why, why, is that, why is that not included in the, the sort of the, the day-to-day or the, the because, teachings? And... Because it's all a, a form of control. Well, that's, so yeah, of like you take into a... account, so if you take a really modern pop culture reference, so like the Book of Eli, have you mm. seen that? I have, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant film. With Denzel. Yeah. yeah. Man, well, my man Denzel. Yeah. <laughs> my man. My man. <laughs> I didn't say the other one. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it was my man. Yeah. Um, that was pretty much an allegory of all the Dead Sea Scrolls. So you take into account um, Gary Oldman's character. He mm. wants that Bible because yeah. it, with the word of God, he can control he can control the people. everyone, yeah. And that essentially is what, what those is. religions yeah. are about. They're about Controlling controlling them the masses. In their own way. Using their own, you know. So that's narrative. why. That's why they they the, 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 these books, the Dead mm. Sea Scrolls, were omitted from 
the the original Hebrew yeah. translation. Mm. You know, so it makes perfect sense as to why they would just yep, yeah, let's do away with that because yeah. that. That's why they're all torn pages rolled well, up yeah, in a cage. It was even like, like um, no, Mary's gospel. None of that. No, none of that. <laughs> Mary Magdalene's gospel was involved in all that as well. She was yeah. such a, in her in her book. She was said to be Jesus's favorite disciple. Yeah. Because yeah. he did have female disciples. He did. He did have just 12 geezers pulling around. He had 12 men and 12 women. Yeah. But conveniently, the women were cut out of the uh, Well, he had equal opportunities. He was all about that, wasn't he? The, the big guy was diverse. Yeah. <laughs> he really was. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. went on the diversity at work uh, seminar. Uh, he, yeah. he was the first. He was the first. <laughs> he was the first. The first one only attendee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. He, he created it and uh, taught it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Talk it, etc. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I find it is. It's just it's just intriguing. That's the, the point I was trying to make was that if you know if, if these beliefs have all been taken from this original source and turned into these religions that so many people believe, things that we're finding that are, you know that are believed to be you know sort of nonsense are coming from the same source material. Yeah. Yet so many people believe in the other stuff. So how can this be any less worthy? Than, Absolutely. You know than. Than that. Well, this is the thing. We're finding that this source material as mm. well. It seems to. It's not just stories. So no. it, we know there was a giant flood. Mm. We know that the sea levels rose four hundred meters about twelve mm. to thirteen thousand years ago. Yeah. We know yeah. that. And it wasn't global warming then. It, no, it certainly wasn't. But, <laughs> it was a massive cataclysm, is what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that could just come out of nowhere. We couldn't be blamed for that one. Could it be like a bus? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah, and it won't. It did. You can't see the bus. You ignored it. Big old bus. Yeah. Your neck. But we also know as well there have been archaeological digs on Mount Ararat in mm. the Caucasus Mountains where they've found an yeah. ark yeah. that is of the same dimensions as those put in that Hebrew Bible. Yeah. So we know that they found it. Yeah. They found the ark. Mm. And they've been able to link with it. But it wasn't genetics. all the two by two nonsense and no, all that. No, no, that, that, that was just, <laughs> that's artistic license, but yeah, certainly didn't have any giraffes in there or elephants. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Leave Nick. But <laughs> Yeah, we'll what we'll happens when we get a spider and a fly on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. we've been over that. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but what we do know is that we've been able to link it to genetics as well. Yes. So we've been able to find the genetic start of humanity in that same area. Yeah. So you know, I don't know. Mm. This is what I find. If that can be believed by so many people and, and, and strongly believed and by so many people. Science is proving it correct. Then so why science... can't this be? Even though it's been proven. Yeah. Yeah, as you say. Yeah, yeah. so science and, and religion are at war with each other in a lot of cases. But yeah. it seems like science in a lot of cases is proving now, it. It's starting yeah. to prove mm. these earlier earlier uh this call it the Bible, yeah. the earlier Bible mm. correct in, yeah. in some circumstances. So yeah, why would we mm. why would you not believe the other stuff that come from it. Yeah. Or I mean the possibility of the other stuff coming from it. I mean not that we'll go into it because that is a whole different conversation oh, and um, podcast episode or whatever else. But even by doing this research on giants, which people believe is just a fairy tale creature or, you know, mythological creature, I found articles and links to pages of translated text you know, claiming that Jesus actually did Exist. Yeah. There was actually a guy that fit his well, they, description. They, they believe they found, John, they found his tomb alongside yeah. his wife and his, and actually his son. Did, actually did find him, yeah. And, uh, like, and John the Baptist, who went by various other names as well, he was also like the right-hand man of, um, of who we mm. learned to know as, as Jesus. And he, I mean, I won't go into it because it does really open yeah, up a whole... Yeah, you about this on Thursday. Before, yeah. yeah, it's like, wow, you went on a rabbit hole with that. Mate, I fell down it big time and it took me ages <laughs> to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a long time. Um, Did you just to get back out? Good, and, and the reason why I've not mentioned it today is because a lot of it isn't relevant to what we're, we're talking about. But again, the, the point I'm sort of poorly making is that, you know, th there is things that have been proven mm. and things that have been not proven but so heavily believed yet the proven stuff isn't. Yeah. And so I think, well, if that can be believed so blindly, why can't this stuff? Yeah. And this has got evidence, this has got facts to it, and, you know, as you say, science. So it's kind of like, you know, you've got to give it some credence. As much as you might think it is, like, utter nonsense, then mm -hmm. there is some real-world stuff, which hopefully we've, we've, you know, we've brought a little bit, uh, you know, to the listeners uh, today, and you've certainly brought it to me as well. I didn't yeah. know a lot of that ancient oh, like Britain stuff so that's brilliant book that that'd be yeah that'd be I'll, I'll yeah, delete that. it to you 
I was going to say, I'll be adding that to my um, <laughs> Amazon wish list. Indeed, mate, indeed. Um, so, yeah, so I think, um, again, although our research took us down two very different paths, we have ultimately cross ended paths. up on cross paths as well, even, um, and brought us back to the, the same, same, same side of the fence. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is. Uh, it's quite yeah. Bizarre, we isn't seem it? to be doing that more and more often. <laughs> I think the the deeper you dive into these things, and the, the further you follow these paths and, and these patterns, you know, inevitably there is only one way it's going to go, um, and that seems to be the way that we're going. You know, at the moment, I'm sure we will hit a, a brick wall or a dead end at some point. But we have at, we've at done point, at least once, haven't we? We've done at least once. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah at least once. Yeah. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I think it could just keep going. And yeah, man. And keep going, and I'm looking forward to following that. Absolutely. That path. Yeah. So, in closing, we thank yeah. you very much, guys, for listening. Yeah, to thank the you. Episode. Hope, hope you've enjoyed it. And thank you very much to our Patreons. Yeah, uh, thank James you again. And Justin, Justin, yeah. seeing this, so thank yeah. you very much, bud. Cheers, man. Much appreciated for your continued support. Absolutely. And a huge thank you to Hellfire Studios as well. Yes. Um, thank keeping, you very much. keeping the doors open for us. Getting the lights on. Yeah. About bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so guys also remember go check us out on the socials um, we're on Facebook Instagram Twitter YouTube all under the same handle of yep. Conspiracy Podcast uh, no that's no, the other that's one the other that's one. not ours <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about I don't know I've got too far into that that's the other one yeah. it's because I wrote the word down Conspiracy that's right it. that's what it's, that is that's it Chris Tindrum ok I'll start that again <laughs> come check us out <laughs> <laughs> Under the same handle yes. of the Critter Around Us podcast. That is it. That's us. That is us. That is us. That one, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've had too much caffeine. I thought, much I, I, thought I kept it simple, but yeah. uh, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is uh, also a good opportunity, seeing as it's fresh in my mind. Yes. And I can actually do it this time. Yep. I'm going to drop the next episode. Yes. We're going to be doing yeah. uh, Skinwalker Ranch, guys. We are. We're going to be doing the Skinwalker and we'll be doing the into ranch. the ranch yeah. itself. Because we, we thought you couldn't really do one without the, well, the we've other. done the Wendigo really. and... Not the Wendigo, and that was he brought up the, you know, the, the Skinwalker and the parallels between the two. Um, and, yeah, we just felt we wanted, whilst it was still relatively, you know, sort of fresh, and, you know, the Wendigo was a creature that we, we both sort of really enjoyed diving into and, and researching. And even now I'm still reading and watching things, even mm. though we've done the episode, you know, about the, the you know, the First Nations, you know, belief and the, the tales and stuff. And... And so no doubt when we do Skinwalker, we're going to cross over back into oh, no that doubt. part of the world and, and everything else uh, as well. But, and specifically, yeah, the probably the latter half of the uh, the episode will, will go down well, to I the I think uh, it might be a long one, to be honest, for the ranch, because that in itself, there's a lot to go through there, man. There's there's potential there's... For, for this to be a two-parter. So, uh... yeah, there is so much phenomena. So much warm. my strangeness yeah. involved with Skinwalker Ranch is unreal. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but like, I mean, I'll still watch the TV show, you, and even some of the reruns. Not yeah. To this day, I'll, I'll watch. Uh, I'll watch it. So um, yeah. See, I haven't taken. I haven't watched that to be honest, but I've watched loads of stuff. Loads of other stuff. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Various people going there and having their own um, investigations. But There'll also, be the interesting ones. The yeah. interesting thing is that the government now own it. The US government now oh, owns Skinwalker Ranch. No, I thought it was owned by one guy. Oh, no, they're not allowing it. anyone any, in, anywhere near it anymore. Oh, that's, it, that's the interesting part. That is an interesting bit, and I'm sure we'll get onto that well, in more detail. <laughs> we'll hit that later. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what she said. <laughs> hey, hey, one more. One more. Four. One more. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, in closing, yes. so thank you very much again for listening. Thank you. You're getting this far within. The, yeah. uh, the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. So you it's, certainly have. It could be, it's a goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from me. And remember, it's not always about the size of the weapon. <laughs> it's certainly not. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs>